That I wasn't drawn to you. Oh, have all I need. Something deep within me calls and tells me I must go. To where I find you. Hey, family. A mystery. I'm a broken man. I'm. Mm -hmm. All right, good morning. I guess that's enough time that's been passed. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. With me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay, y'all know it's summertime. You might wonder why I take the time and do these uh, videos concerning how hot the summers was, especially between the years 1917 uh, and 1923 to be exact. Some people say 21, some people say 23. Uh, and what I mean by that, I mean it was the bloodiest, the deadliest on record by far. So what we think we going through right now, um, there was a sense of, of some sort of normalcy after this period right here because it was so damn tainted and so damn crazy. It was almost um, uh, that, that people had to take a break from this, um, all this murder and massacre and mayhem that was always, that was permeating the summers between those years I just read. Um, 1917 and 1923. Now, one of the uh, uh, another one that people don't talk about, since we want to talk about the Oklahoma, Tulsa race riot, um, uh, the burning of Black Wall Street, and I hope that all y'all get a chance to uh, that don't know, look at Black Wall Street um, as an as an example of how we can't win. So we can't win. You know, so people say, oh, do it again. Okay. Some of us probably can. And I think the fight, I'm, I'm not here to say whether you should start again and do it again or not. What I am saying is uh, you already know, okay? So let's go here. You already know. That's all I can say. You already know. East St. Louis race riots of 1917. On July 2nd, a bloody outbreak of violence in East St. Louis, Illinois, stemming specifically from the employment of black workers in a factory holding government contracts. It was the worst of many incidents of racial antagonism in the United States during World War I that were directed specifically toward black Americans newly employed in war industries. In the riot, whites turned on blacks indiscriminately, stabbing, clubbing, and hanging them, and 
driving 6,000 miles from their homes, 40 blacks and 8 whites were killed. Clubbing, hanging them, and driving 6,000 from their homes, what I meant to say. On July 28th, the NAACP staged a silent parade down Fifth Avenue in New York City, protesting and other acts of violence towards black Americans. German propaganda magnified these incidents in an attempt to arouse anti-war sentiment in the American black community. And President Woodrow Wilson publicly denounced mob violence and lynchings, which were there, uh, which there had been 54 in 1916 and 38 in 1917. Woodrow Wilson, huh? Um, so we don't talk about that riot, uh, you know, a lot. We really don't. Um, and it was, it was a sad time. It was a sad time. Those, um, that lived and can remember that. I remember my uncle telling me about that. Uh, they live in Gary. And, um, which is very close. East St. Louis is, is they, they all close together, it's like right across the road. Anyway, following Germany's defeat in World War I, War, that country deeply ingrained anti Semitism and was successfully exploited by the Nazi Party. It, it, this is where this whole concept comes when it seized power and implemented policies of systemic discrimination, persecution, and eventual mass murder of Jews in Germany and in terrorist um, in the, and in territories occupied by the country during World War II. Um, in North America and, and apartheid era South Africa, Racism dictated that different races, chiefly blacks and whites, segregated from one another and that they should have their own distinct communities and develop their own institutions, such as church, schools, hospitals, and that it was unnatural for members of di different races to marry. Historically, those who uh, openly profess or practice racism held that members of low status races should be limited to low status jobs, that members of the dominant race should have exclusive access to political power, economic resources, high status jobs, and unrestricted civil rights. The lived experience of racism for members of low status racism includes acts of physical violence, daily insults, frequent acts of verbal expressions, and contempt of and disrespect, all which have profound effects on one's self-esteem and social relationships. And um, so this is what a lot of people want to claim as teaching um, victim, or how they say it, uh, you, you, you're um, exploiting victim, creating victim mentality. And that's why they want to have an anti-history, um, basically, cult going around in these schools to teach a false sense of what history really is and to make sure that real history doesn't get out. And, and that's a racism and all this stuff that was created by these uh, wicked, wicked, insane narcissists. Continue to wield power and seize control over, um, you know, the minority population. So, you know, when we talk about these race riots, I just want, it's very important that we understand that uh, not just Tulsa was affected. It, those the East St. Louis race riot might have been one of the bloodiest and the deadliest, and if if it wasn't, it was just as bad. It was just as bad. 
And summer is upon us again, people. It's going to be deadly again. It's going to be hot. Because they're going to continue to disrespect us. And I think we need to respond different. That would probably be the most powerful thing we could do. Is respond differently. We have to. We have to. I don't want this summer to go down as the bloodiest and the deadliest summer in history. You know, and only we as a society have the ability to control that. So it is what it is. At the end of the day, God is still in control. So I want to go. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.